Okay, so this brings us to a pretty common type of tension problem that we're going to encounter in physics 11. So a three kilogram box is tied by a rope to a five kilogram box. The five kilogram box is pulled to the right with a force of 10 newtons. And the question is, what is the tension of the rope that's between the two boxes? So just like any force problem, we always have to start this with free body diagrams. But you'll notice that we have two different objects. So we're going to do a free body diagram for, let's call it mass 1, which is the 3 kilogram one on the left. And then we'll call mass 2 the object on the right. So we'll start with the free body diagram of mass 1. It's got the force of gravity pulling it downwards. It's got the normal force pushing it back upwards. And the tension in the rope on mass 1 is pulling mass 1 to the right. Those are all the forces. There's no friction. If we are not told anything about friction, we assume it's zero. So the only force acting to the left or to the right is the force of the tension in the rope. So that will bring us to the free body diagram of M2. M2 is going to have a slightly larger force of gravity because it's a heavier mass. It's going to have a slightly larger normal force to counteract that force of gravity. And because the rope is tied to the left, the tensions pull inwards or to the left on block two. It should be the same size as the tension that's acting on M1. And we also have this applied 10 Newton force, which let's label as FA just so we have something to call it, that's pulling the boxes to the right. Now I know that because this object is going to accelerate, accelerate to the right, there's no friction, so it's got to move to the right. This applied force will have to be a little bit bigger than that tension force. So that way there's an unbalanced force on mass 2 acting to the right. This actually gives us a ballpark for the tension force as well. Even though we don't know what it is, we do know that it has to be less than 10 newtons. So now we're going to go on a little detour. Usually what we would do in a force problem after we have our free body diagrams done is we would take this time to write out the F net statement for, for our object. So because we have two objects, I'll write two F net equations and see where that gets us. So for object one, the net force, and this is going to be just in the x direction, we only care about the horizontal forces because that's the force, or that's the direction that the tension is acting in. So we'll do the F net statement for the x direction. The F net statement is just F net equals T because there's only one force acting horizontally on mass one. So we'll replace F net with MA, and we could call that M1A because this is just the net, F net statement on mass one is equal to the tension. Now keeping in mind that we're trying to solve for the tension in this problem, there's no way to solve for the tension unless we know the acceleration of the system. We have too many unknowns otherwise. So unless we have a way to solve for A, we're kind of stuck in this equation. So let's go over to the F net statement for mass two and play a similar game. F net is equal to, in this case, positive force, the force to the right, and you know this is something I probably should have done earlier, but let's call all forces acting to the right positive, all forces acting to the left negative. So that means that the F net statement for M2 is FA acting to the right subtract the tension that's acting to the left. So because there are only two forces acting in the horizontal direction, those are the two forces that have to appear in our F net statement. So we have FA acting to the right, subtract the tension because it's acting to the left. And now we'll go ahead and fill in F net is equal to MA 
but because we're just considering the free body diagram of mass 2, this is the net force on mass 2, it's going to be m2 times a equals fa minus t. And you'll notice that now we have a different unknown in this, or, or we should, I should say we have a different force in this problem, which is the applied force. And that's not an unknown, so it's not a big issue to have it in our equation. It's just a number that we can stick in. But we still have this acceleration that we don't know. So writing the F net statement for both of the blocks individually doesn't get us anywhere. It doesn't get us closer to solving for the tension. So if looking at the two blocks separately doesn't help us, what that means is that we have to look at the bigger system. So what I'm going to do is we're going to write an F net statement for the entire system. All the forces acting to the right and all the forces acting to the left. And so let's start with the main force acting to the right, which is FA. And then you'll notice we have another force acting to the right here, which is the tension pulling block one to the right. So I can write, we also have another rightwards force, and that's the tension in our F net statement. But then we look over to block two, and we see that there's a leftwards force, which is the tension of the rope pulling back on block two. So the F net statement is the force applied plus the tension that's pulling block one minus the tension that's pulling block two. Well, that means that those two tensions cancel each other out. In other words, the net force of the entire system is equal to just the applied force. What, one of the important parts of tensions is that because the tensions along the rope are equal, and they pull to the left with the same force that they pull to the right, those tensions never appear in an F net statement for the entire system. In the entire system, those tensions have canceled each other out. So they do appear in the F net statements for individual masses, but they don't appear for the greater system as a whole. So now we finally have a place to start in this problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a free body diagram for the system as a whole. In this case, the dot is going to represent M1 plus M2. So there's a normal force upwards. And as we just discussed, the tensions aren't going to appear anywhere in the free body diagram for the system. The only force that acts on the system as a whole, the only outside force, is the applied force pulling the five kilogram block to the right. You can think of that tension force almost as an internal force within the system that cancels itself out. So now, using this, we can write that F net statement for the two blocks together, or the system as a whole. Because we've now begun to talk about the net force of the entire system, that means F net equals MA, the mass has to be of the entire system. So I'll label that M cis. And again, that's equal to FA. Well, M cis is just M1, plus m2. It's the mass of the combined parts times the acceleration is equal to fa. There's only one unknown in this equation, and that's the acceleration. So we can actually calculate the acceleration by plugging in the values that we have for those variables. Acceleration is equal to 10 divided by 
3 plus 5, in other words, 10 divided by 8. So we can say that the acceleration is equal to 1.25 meters per second squared. But in this question, we weren't asked for the acceleration. We were asked for the tension in the rope. And that equation that we were just working with doesn't have the tension in it, which is why we actually wanted to use that equation in the first place. But what it means is that now we have to go back to that free body diagram of mass 1 or mass 2, but we're going to use mass 1, and I'll tell you why. If you have to choose between the two masses in order to solve for the tension, I'm going to pick the one with the fewer forces because it's just less work to do, less opportunities for mistakes. So I can write the F net statement for mass 1. I'm going to fly through this a bit because we've already done this. The F net statement is equal to the tension. So that's M1A is equal to the tension. Well, now we're getting somewhere because the acceleration is no longer an unknown. Because these are all tied together, they have to accelerate together. If they accelerated at different rates, it would mean that the rope was stretching or breaking or something weird was happening. But we always have to assume that everything in the system accelerates at the same rate together. So now that we've solved for the acceleration for the entire system, we can say that that's the acceleration of mass 1, that's the acceleration of mass 2 as well, it's the acceleration of everything. So the tension in the rope is going to be equal to mass 1 is 3 kilograms times the acceleration 1.25 meters per second squared. In other words, the tension is 3.75 newtons.